I've had a lot of questions about the tools that I've been using in my videos. People have come to me at shows and have asked me, well, when you use this, I didn't really get to see it very well. So what I'm going to try to cover in this video is the exact tools that I use and why I use them. Um, of course, the very first thing I use for the Dear Jane uh, English Paper Piecing project is the Dear Jane book. I, take it, I took it and had it spiral bound at a print shop. Um, and what they also did is they added a clear cover on both sides. So to have them cut the binding and do a spiral binding and put a clear cover on the front and the back was less than $5. It's very much worth it because then you can open it up and turn it flat so that while you're laying your pieces out, it's a lot easier because it doesn't have that big hump here so that your pieces slide down. So this is really very useful when you're sorting your pieces. One of the other main things I use primarily is one of these clear project boxes. The thing I love about the project box is this is actually my table. All my videos you'll see me working right from this box. I got little glue stains on it and all that kind of thing. But everything's with me and I have a portable table already so I can take it to go. I have taken off my block. I have my other block on another project box right now. Um, I'm in the middle of working on K11. That's why this is showing. And um, so what I'll have in my box is I have the section that I'm working on will be in its little bag so that I can refer to it if it's a modified block. I have pre-prepped pre blocks ready to go to lay out to base and to assemble and I do this with the block preps um, so I've got a, a little pile of those and I have the rest of my K row and then here's a triangle that's prepped here's a triangle I got the fabric in here but I haven't gotten the block sorted because it's um, all in one bag here it is B10 to 13 I haven't sorted this yet and this is the fabric from that Every time I open up a pack, uh, a, a Dear Jane row pack, I take the cornerstones and sashings and stick them in a bag, and then I will put, I will stick them in the bag, and then eventually, then I will also take some fabric. I usually will pre-cut fabric and have that in a separate bag. So then all I got to do is do is glue it on here and then baste them. And so in here is sashings and cornerstones as I get to my next block like I'll take my next block out and then I'll take two sashings and one cornerstone and stick it in here so that when I do finish this block I have my cornerstones and sashings already right in here so that's what's in here and then if you dig further I've got some other stuff I have my next row stuff in here I have the um, Triangles, I've been working on borders as I go too. And this is some extras because occasionally they give you some extras, so I just don't. And I'm going to save it till the end. This is my sashing fabric. I got my uh, fabric as a block of the month from Stitch in Heaven, which was really nice because each one of these Dear Jane blocks takes a small amount of fabric. And the Stitch in Heaven block of the months that they're still running, I got mine in 2010, but they're still running various colorways throughout the years. Um, it's a 24 month block of the month and they give you little tiny bits of fabric and so what I also have so what they have here is one of the packs and I put my scalp this is for my uh, borders my border triangles and so they give you this little bit bits of fabric for each block and they'll label it and tell you what it's for so that's always really convenient and I've got some other stuff in here notes and some scissors and things like that so when you see me with this, with this box, there's tons of stuff in the box. Most, if not all, my videos are videoed the segment by segment wherever I am. But because it's more comfortable for me to have everything out at home, I have this armchair thing that I got at Christmas time. They have these little things with pockets and stuff in them for remote controls and stuff. And this one has like this little tray that has edges so I just pile stuff in here I've got pins sticking on the side it goes over the edge of my curved chair arm and I have my scotch tape that I use for my flatback stitch method I have a 
tape scissors. This, this, these scissors won't even cut thread anymore. They're perfect for tape because I need a scissors dedicated just to the tape because I don't want to have that blunt edge on my fabric or my thread. I have my dual duty paper piecing thread. This is a, uh, a new thread that was developed by Coates and Clark. They uh, developed it specifically for foundation paper piecing. It is a polyester monofilament thread wrapped with polyester and it doesn't pull and damage your fabric like the other polyester threads have in the past. It does give a little bit like a cotton thread. It stitches like a 60 weight and it is extremely strong. I'm an aggressive piecer. I like to pull very, very hard where I have the seam gaps so that I can make sure that I reduce that growth. Every time you come to a seam gap, then you have that kind of a thing. This thread really helps when I pull. This pink thing I have wrapped around it is like a bobbin saver kind of a thing, except it's for spools of thread. That way you don't have to tie up your end and your end doesn't get away on you. So these things I found at a fabric store for, you know, a buck or two. I can't even remember what the actual name of it is. But the dual duty paper piecing thread comes in 10 colors. That's all they make right now. I do have it available on my website at quiltersexpress.com under the pools piecing section. Some of the other things I have in here, I have my sew line glue pen. I have used the school glue glue sticks because there have been a there has been discussion about whether the school glue or the sew line glue is better and it's personal preference. Some people thread based. So if you're a glue baser, the uh, the benefits of the school glue, number one is the cost is very affordable because they are uh, about 50 cents or so a piece if you get them on sale at Walmart in a big bulk pack. Um, and they're readily available in large quantities. They do dry clear. Um, most of the ones that I have are purple. One of the drawbacks is the width. When you're dealing with Dear Jane, you have a lot of tiny pieces. And if you look just even at the caps, the width of the school glue, this is one of the smallest ones that are available. There are larger ones. And so what happens, you get glue all over your fingers. So I did have issues with it. I do use this for some of the larger pieces, like my scallop triangles and things on the borders. I will use this. Um, the Soline glue, I buy a one pen and tons and tons and tons of refills. I have lost count how many glue refills I've gone through on this. There's blue, there's pink, there's yellow, and there's a bunch of different colors. I think the blue and the pink are the most common. You just Once you get to the end of this, you pop this out, you put another one on, and you rescind it back into the pen. And so it's really easy to refill and I just keep uh, refills handy in my little bag at all times. I also have another pair of scissors here. Uh, this is fabric only scissors and I even wrote on it so that people wouldn't be questioning. There's no paper on my scissor, although I have to re replace the uh, Sharpie because it's faded at this point. I have a uh, container here. This is called a needle nest. This is also on my website. Um, this allows me to put a threaded needle or not threaded needle on a magnet so I can put it in a pocket and find it because I will usually put my needle in something but I'll knock it or you know it'll catch on something and it will disappear. This way I know where my needles are at all times and I use for my needles I use a number 11 Boheen applique needle. The metal is aggressive to the point where I won't snap it. I have used some very expensive needles and I snapped it again because I am aggressive sewer. They were very smooth though. Some of the other higher end needles, I can't remember the brand. It was a very smooth glide, but it didn't last very long since I got glue and paper going through it all the time. One of my favorite tools is this tool. And this is a, this is a stiletto um, seam ripper combination. And this side you have a seam ripper that pops out and you you know put one on one side, one on the other. So I've got a blunt end on one side and the other side. Um, so if I pull this out, I got a blunt end on this side as well. What I do is I use my blunt end, I will put a piece of tape on my block, and then I will use my blunt end to push it down. Scotch tape does not stick well to fabric because it wasn't designed to, but it sticks enough for the, for the flat back stitch method. And that way you're assured that you've got, you know, everything stuck as best you can. This doesn't roll either. That's the best part that I've found is the fact that it's, it's flat so because I had one most of them that I've had that have been um, round and they roll right off the table they'll roll off roll and they'll hit the concrete 
and then the, the end of this will da be damaged or um, have a spur on it. And of course, once you have that, then you got issues. If you've got the seam ripper side, I've broken them before. So, um, and not this particular brand. This has got a really nice heavy duty metal that they used. This is handmade in, in Virginia. We, I have a guy that makes these. And we do sell these on our website as well. Um, they come in different woods. This is American Walnut. I think I've got some ones made out of mango and some various other woods that come and go as they are available. And then my other favorite tool is my Sterling Silver Custom Fit Thimble. This thimble was fit directly to my finger, whichever finger that is. If you stitch with, with your index finger, you can get it fit for that. If you can get it fit for this, whatever works for you. Uh, this is um, made from uh, thimbles called Thimbles by TJ, and TJ Lane has been making these thimbles for many, many years, and there's a guarantee with these thimbles that if your finger changes fit, whether you lose weight, gain weight, break a finger, or whatever, and you need it to be adjusted, there's a lifetime guarantee to adjust that. So I had a situation where I changed, um, I uh, had an issue with my finger, and I needed to change fingers because I broke a finger. And so I had, it, I had it swapped out with no problem at all. So as long as you get in touch with a uh, certified TJ Lane person, you should not have any problem with that at all. They come with jewels on it, and there's tons and tons of different stuff available on their website as well. So along with my box, I also have my bag. And my bag is a handmade bag. Um, and this is a quilt illustrated pattern called the Tool Tote, and it was made by my mother, and she is just awesome and crafty and all that fun stuff. And most of all, she has the time to do it because I don't have the time. And so I've got pockets on the sides, like all the sides. This has got a pocket here, and then you turn it around, and there's three more pockets, and then there's another pocket, and then you open it, and there's way more pockets. But this I love because I can put every other thing in here. And so I unzip this and it pops open to have all this fun stuff. And so I have, these are like little Yazi things that I had in a Yazi bag. And I put all my stuff that's in my armrest in here. So my, my uh, scotch tape and my thimble goes in here and then all the scissors and stuff. And then I have extra pens and a glue refill and more of these little spool things. And my thread cutter for my finger and another storage stuff for a block or two. And then I, this is, this is a bag that has more than stuff that I need. I got rotary cutters in here that I don't need. I got some friction pens and a compass. But this is pretty much everything I need for everything. This is athletic tape that I use on my pinky for when I'm pulling. When I sew, I pull my thread and it wraps around my pinky and eventually if I stitch too long this because this thread is so fantastic it will cut through my skin so if I put a piece of athletic tape there that prevents it from cutting through my skin so that's why that's in there and so I got of course I got pins and all this stuff my hot light is above me and um, scissors more seam ripper this is my round one that rolls off the floor but this is the same thing as my flat-sided one. It's just not flat. It's round. So this is called a tool tote. They also have another one called the um, boxy tote. It's the same thing. It's just considerably taller. And you can find that online uh, on various websites and things like that. But um, that is what I carry every single thing in. I carry this and my project box with me wherever I go to the shows or to uh, guild or wherever. Here's my block on my project box and then some of the other things I use I have baggies that I use for my block prep and so I reuse these so these are ones I use and I've taken the blocks out of. Once I'm done with my block I stick it in a box here and so these are finished blocks and I will stick them in my box with my sashings and cornerstones not attached because I am videoing these as I go I can't video when I go to like guild and stuff 
or I prefer not to video when I'm at shows, but I do these as demos. So I will attach my sashings and my cornerstones on at the shows on my table. And so this is some I've done the most recent show. I've attached these sashings and cornerstones. But these are all in order. Once I have enough for a row, I'll take them all out and I'll assemble them. And I've also been working on some of the piece blocks, and that's what some of this stuff is. So that way they're all in order from when I'm ready for them. And of course, no sitting area would be complete without a remote control for entertainment to while the hours away.